Are you aware of whether or not narcotics proceeds at some time may or may not have supported Contra efforts? Yes, sir. Narcotics proceeds were used to shore up the uh, Contra effort. One of the important facets of the discussion should be what I call conspiracy theories. There are lots of folks out there, and there are books written on this by people who are in a position to know, former DEA agents, former CIA operatives, things like that. And they tell stories about huge amounts of money, large-scale corruption in the big parts of government, etc. And are these stories true? Ask yourself this question. If you're going to have a million dollars in cash, how much corruption can you buy at any level for that million dollars? And the answer has to be quite a bit. On December 10th, 2004, investigative journalist Gary Webb was found shot in his apartment. No! You lying! No. When? Saturday. Oh, man. Well, he used to tell me that, that, that he would come home at night and he'd be guys, you know, climbing up the pole and late at night, 12 and 1 o'clock, and, and, you know, at, at night time. And people following him around everywhere he goes. He, he has cars telling him and his phone was tapped. And he was just saying that they, they, they were, they were kind of like giving him the blues. You know, a lot of things were going on that, 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 that he didn't really like. And he said it was the government, too. By the way, the head of the DEA, his name is Rob Bonner, who's a friend of mine uh, throughout the first George Bush administration, said, documented that yes, the, the CIA was involved with the importation of a fair amount of cocaine uh, with regard to the Iran-Contra, etc. But it just has to happen because of the money. We understand what you're saying. A ton of cocaine was smuggled into the United States of America. Well, the... In cooperation with the CIA? That's what... That's exactly what appears to have happened. When I was a clandestine case officer, I thought I was doing God's work, the nation's work, by recruiting traitors in, in varied countries around the world. And what I didn't realize was that I was literally there for show. I was just going through the motions because the traders weren't producing really useful information. Uh, we were ignoring all of the openly available information that would have produced much richer uh, results. Let's jump over to General Manuel Noriega in Panama. General Noriega was told by Bill Casey, then director of the Central Intelligence Agency, that he could have a free run with drugs into America, provided that he allowed us to support the Contras from Panama. That was a straight up deal. George Bush Sr. came to Guatemala on January 13, 1986. And he approached me and asked me what I did uh, there at the uh, U.S. Embassy, what my job description was. And I told him I was a DEA agent working uh, uh, international narcotics investigations. And I told him, look, you know, we have gathered intelligence that the Contras are involved in drug trafficking down in El Salvador. And then he just smiled, shook my hand, and, and walked away from me. And it was then and there that I knew that my government knew that these atrocities were occurring. How could this be possible? Then we read through the documents, and then that's when Gary Webb started explaining it to us, and we was like, everything came together then. One of the most paramount moments, perhaps caused by Gary Webb's Dark Alliance, took place in November of 1996. It was a monumental historic event. I mean, the director of the Central Intelligence Agency was coming to Watts to face the people. Now, we all know that the U.S. government and the CIA supported the Contras in their efforts to overthrow the Sandinista government in Nicaragua in the middle 80s. Now, it is alleged the CIA also helped the Contras raise money for arms by introducing crack cocaine into California. Deutsch felt he had to do something to try to uh, deal with the outrage that was foaming all over the country at the time. And of course, it just blew up in his face. CIA fights drugs. CIA does not encourage drugs. Well, I mean, it was, it was actually one of the most monumental blunders of all time, uh, if you think about it. We have no evidence 
of a conspiracy by the CIA to engage in encouraging drug traffickers in Nicaragua or elsewhere in Latin America. Deutsch was there because of the Gary Webb stories. The Gary Webb stories had sparked a national furor. I would like to have Richard Ross's uh, brother to speak, please. The United States government turned their head and let this cocaine come into the United States of America. Allow Gary Webb to have full access. This whole thing is orchestrated. It was near pandemonium. It was about, I guess, 1,200 people in a standing room only in the auditorium. 2,000 people outside listening on loudspeakers. And uh, it was very hard to keep control. I got called on finally, and I said to her very clearly, I was talking, looking right at Deutsch. I am a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, and I work South Central Los Angeles, and I will tell you, Director Deutsch, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. <laughs> Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. I have Watchtower documents heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. He stumbled and stammered and wrung his hands. If you have information about CIA illegal activity in drugs, you should immediately bring that information to wherever you want, but let me suggest three places. The Los Angeles Police Department. And of course my response was, I started there 18 years ago, sir, and they tried to kill me. Now what do you want me to do? If this information turns up wrongdoing, we will bring the people to justice and make them accountable. The crowd started chanting, we told you, we told you, we told you. And it was a great moment of unity, and it was a healing moment for me. When the Taliban was in, in Afghanistan, they were what they were, but they were definitely against opium crops cultivation, and a lot of it was destroyed. Police don't bother them. The U.S. military has other priorities. So within this past year that the U.S. government has controlled Afghanistan, why is there a major crop of heroin that's going to be coming into the U.S. or has come into the U.S.? We secured the country just in time to release a whole bunch of opium warlords from prison. It was in the news. I have come more than 180 degrees. I work narcotics in South Central Los Angeles. Now I am completely and totally in favor of decriminalizing all drug use, period. Drug addiction, like alcohol addiction, is not a criminal problem. It's a medical problem, a social problem, a spiritual problem. Here we go. But, you know, the money incentive behind the drug war is so great that, you know, uh, to shut this big, big machine, that, that rehab machine, prison machine, felonization machine, this whole other, you know, uh, uh, thing that they have going down is gonna take a, a, a real revolution. But Emiliano Zapata once said, you know, I'd rather die on my feet than be living on my knees for the rest of my life. The next big step is the people refusing to uh, pay taxes or to re-elect people. In fact, I see 80 million Americans getting themselves organized to the point where they can tell Congress that if it doesn't dramatically reduce what we spend on a heavy metal military, on secret intelligence, on prisons, which are actually slave farms, then these people will be fired. in America is that our government is inadvertently supplying the hard drugs, then they're putting the people who use them in this country in jail.